Welcome to the Reddit time. Hey Reddit, what was your thank god I looked at the contract moment? Series replies only. Today I'll tell you about some true stories. Let's go. I signed up for a gym membership on a whim and got sketched out when they initially charged me $250 instead of only the $90 for the first month. I went home and legit didn't sleep because I was so mad I went through with it. I called and asked the next day to see if I could cancel and almost everyone I spoke to said either no, it was impossible or only if I moved to an area that didn't have the gym. I checked the contract and you could cancel within the first two weeks and I was only three days into the contract. You bet your ass I cancelled so fast. Edit. Lifetime fitness. Did you get your money back? Yup, full refund. Landlord agreed to let me move out a month early since he wanted to lease the apartment to someone else. We had to sign new paperwork to let me out of the original lease and to make me agree to be out by an early date. I knew he was a recently convicted forger, so I made sure to read what I was signing. He'd added the condition that if anything fell through with the new tenant, that I would still be on the hook for rent after I moved out. I called him out on it, and he said, oh yeah, I just added the part to protect myself. Then he stole my deposit. I still need to take him to court for that. Fuck you, John. Do it already, make him pay. Do it for all of us who love you. Do it for all of us who have never gotten a deposit back. There is always some crap the landlord will make up to take your money. Get yours back for me, bro. Went to buy a new phone for $200, the employee told me they were closing soon and asked if I could come back the next day to sign the paperwork. The $200 mysteriously changed to $300 while the document was sitting in a desk overnight. Called them out on it and got it from somewhere else. Why would he even chance you not coming back? If you got a sale, you close it, even if it means staying at work an extra half hour, especially in a commission-based position like phone sales. You should really consider buying your phones unlocked. Sure, you have to fork over more money at the start, but whoever you're signing the contract with is going to get the full price out of you one way or another. Plus, if you buy unlocked, there is no carrier bullshit loaded on the phone. My wife and I were at the car dealership buying our first car. The dealership was offering special new interest financing for recent college grads and we were using it to finance the car. The finance guy presented us with two options, a 3-year payment plan and a 5-year payment plan. The whole time he made it sound like the zero interest applied to both and so we went for the 5-year plan to get a lower payment. Finance guy tries to get us to sign without reading the paperwork, but we weren't having that. Come to find out the longer payment plan didn't qualify for the no interest deal and we were getting charged 6.5%, which is a hell of a lot more than zero. We got busy and threatened to walk out after we realized what they were trying to pull and got them to come down on the price. I know they've pulled that on other recent grads who don't read the paperwork and just sign. I briefly dated a car salesman and all around shady dude for a while when I was fresh out of college. They used to call the deals where they were able to con someone into paying more interest-wise a head crack, and these victories would be well celebrated in the back rooms of the dealerships. As a result, I always walk into the dealership with my own financing from my bank. Some workplace that demanded at least 4 years of employment, or else I would have to pay for those 4 years, as you would pay for a course in case of early quitting. How? I feel like that wouldn't at all be legal but I bet they'd send a scary official looking notice demanding their money or else. And a lot of people would either accept it or be too scared to quit in the first place. My last restaurant job had a non-competition clause in the new handbook. I pointed out to co-workers few signed and it was revised in a week. Non-compete for a restaurant job? What mysterious secrets could they have that no one else does? It's to keep them from quitting. You are more likely to put up with bullshit if you are not allowed to get another job elsewhere. Went to pick up my car from the dealership and it said by signing the paperwork it gave them permission to lend my information to third parties. Nope. What did you do? It was my first time getting my car fixed there, but they wouldn't release the vehicle to me if I didn't sign. I watched them delete my contact information from their system, took my keys and left. When I bought my car new three years ago, the finance department processed and had me sign paperwork at a certain price. Then they called me three days later and told me that their lender fell through and I would actually have to pay an additional $100 a month. I brought in the paperwork with the price assigned for and the keys, told them they would stick to the contract or they could have their car back with the additional millage. Apparently, this is a fairly common practice at car dealerships. Beware. I had taken some helicopter flying lessons and was considering switching careers to that. So I found a flight school and applied for a student loan. Funny me was the only one that would cover it. And when I got the final paperwork, the interest rate was higher than they told me over the phone and the total payment to them was going to be well over $200,000. So I cancelled and didn't go to flight school. Edit. 
Sorry everybody, I meant Sally May. Buying my house. Husband signed the paperwork and I'm waiting later that day to sign. I started to read through the loan application. Mortgage lender said, what are you doing? You don't have to read this, your husband already signed it. I was like, no, I want to make sure it is what I want. Loan was a $200,500 at 25%. Yeah, right. Didn't sign it and got out of there. Mortgage guy said he was going to take me to court. I said, go ahead, it would be cheaper than what he wanted me to sign. Took over all the mortgage stuff from then on. Mortgage guy was a friend of a high school friend of my husband. Tell me you had an important talk with your husband. I'd be very angry if my significant other had signed such a documentary without reading the most important parts. He trusted the guy and was told that was the best we could do with our credit. This was the start of all those crazy mortgages in the 2000s. It was also a super crazy time in our lives. We had a two-year-old, I was super pregnant, my dad had just died and our landlord was selling the place we were living in. We had a short space of time to do everything. Luckily, I took over the paperwork and we got an FHA loan at 3% for 30 years. Viewed this great flat and was ready to hand over a deposit when I decided that I should actually read the rules they sent me once over again. I had read the one they gave me when I viewed the place and it was a bit strict and in general I thought it was silly to have written rules when you are paying that much, but again, nothing I couldn't handle. Same card in I checked. The rules listed in the email were completely different and included gems like if you wish to bring a guest to the house, you must put forth a request in writing at least one week prior and must be approved by all members of the flat. There will be no guests allowed after 10 pm, absolutely no guests staying over. Any guest that comes over will require a $20 fee to go towards water usage for toilets. I'm like, you want me to pay over a $1,000 a month for my own private room and not be able to invite people to come over without jumping through ridiculous hoops? Noped out real quick. There were a few other ridiculous things, but that took the bonds. We were in the process of selling our business. My wife's car was registered under business. We sat down with our lawyer to discuss what is included in the sale, equipment, supplies, etc. And we clearly told him the car isn't included in the sale. Well, guess what we received? The typed up contract from our lawyer and he had added the car along with other things. Thank God we read it and had it removed before signing it and sending it to buyer's lawyer. Any idea why would he try to screw you over like that? I'm guessing that he was just not paying attention. Let's just say he is not the best lawyer. We sent a freelance contract from a job offer in the media industry. I was graduated at the time with two years experience, was offered six and a half pound hourly pay and with the exception that I must be available to work 37 and a half hours per week. I had to use my own car for business purposes but couldn't claim expenses for fuel or millage. And above all, the contract demanded full rights for the company to use any creative works I produced within two years before the start date of the position. I didn't accept the job. Mine wasn't really extreme but my girlfriend and I were shopping for houses and we were checking out a townhouse style condominium. The price was within our budget and the monthly maintenance fees were average for the area. It was an open house event hosted by a retailer so the property annual expenses were included in a pamphlet. I found that on top of the regular monthly maintenance fees, around $350, there was an additional expense of $800 every 6 months. I asked why there was an additional expense if there were already regular fees. She responded that the extra $1,600 per year was used to keep the fees low. I responded that the fees are average for the area and many places in the same neighborhood are already lower. Long story short, it was a nice house but we didn't pursue it further. I'm on board with the idea of condo fees if they cover things that I would normally pay for like heat, water, snow removal, garden care, etc. and if needed additional expenses for major upgrades like new roofs or doors windows. But expecting 12 houses in the row complex to each kick in a 1600 bonus every year without specific accountability isn't something that interests me. Hey, we keep the fees low most of the year so you can make up the difference every few months. It's an accelerated plan. It lets you pay 16 months of fees in just 12 months. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it a lot. Have you ever been happy about watching the contract before signing it? If you have any similar stories, you can comment down below. Also, subscribe to my channel, give me a big thumbs up and see you in the next video.